So today we saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they lost to the Cincinnati Bengals. It's a preseason game. You can't overthink it. You can't look into this at all, at all, right? It's a preseason game. Yesterday, I posted a video where I showed you that several quarterbacks, second and third string quarterbacks looked really good. There was several of them. And then again today, right? Trey Lance didn't look bad. I think he had a huge touchdown pass. Um, Zach Wilson, I think, went six for nine today. Like Kellen Mond didn't have a bad day. Jordan Love with the Green Bay Packers had an, a, a good day. Like a lot of quarterbacks are going to have good preseason games because coaches call plays in order to build their confidence, right? Because they're trying to develop these quarterbacks. So when you watch preseason games, you have to ignore the box office numbers. Box office numbers don't tell you anything about a preseason game. As a matter of fact, one of the mistakes fans make is they read too much into stats, especially with regards to preseason games. And they have what I call the bug eye theory, right? You uh, don't see slug bugs until you start looking for them, right? It's like they don't exist, but if you play the game slug bugs, suddenly they're everywhere, right? It's like your lunch receipts. You don't realize how much you're spending on lunch until you save up your receipts. And then at the end of the month, you're like, oh my God, I'm spending two, $300 on lunch every month. This is ridiculous, right? And what happens with fans and their teams during preseason games is we see the game the way we want to see it, right? If we have a quarterback we like, we have a player we like, we're like, oh, if you know the receiver would have just caught the ball or if the line would have just protected them or if the coach would have just called the right play. It's like always, almost, almost, you know, and we narrate the game the way we want to see the game. So when you watch a preseason game, you shouldn't focus so much on box numbers. You should be looking more for raw talent, right? You should be looking for talent that can be developed over time. That's what I look for when I watch a preseason game. And when I watched the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, game today, there were a few things I came away with. One is Joe Tryon. Joe Tryon is going to be huge. Okay, Joe Tryon is going to be huge. The talent he displayed on the football field today. When Joe Tryon was playing, he has an insane first step. He has great hand movement and he's fast. I mean, Joe Tryon is big and fast. He reminds me of like a young JPP, but better. And, and I'm not saying as of today, right? I'm not trying to say he's better than JPP. I'm just saying he reminds me of a young version of JPP. One of the reasons why I feel Joe Tryon was overlooked, and he wasn't so much overlooked because he did go in the first round, but I mean not much higher, you know, ahead of Jalen Phillips or Owe, is because he opted out his final season. He opted out his final season, and he only had so much experience under his belt as a collegiate player. and. You know, the final year when he opted out, he trained at Proactive Sports and he trained with Micah Parsons and Panay Sewell and other players to get ready for the NFL. And the facility is known, right? It's a facility that's known for getting players ready for the NFL. So he wasn't off training by himself or anything like this. He was training to become an NFL player. So he used his time wisely. Joe Tryon is going to have a big year. Okay, He's going to have a big year for two reasons. One, of course, like I said, he's super talented, but two, positioning, okay? The team he's on and who he's playing with. I don't know what the over-under is. I don't. I would assume it's like six, seven sacks or something like that, QB sacks. I would take the over just because not only is he super talented, but imagine this. Imagine how good he's going to be when he's on the field with JPP, Shaq Barrett, Vita Villa, Devin White and Levante David. Just imagine how good he's going to be, right? He's not going to see any double teams, right? Shaq Barrett and, and, and JPP or Vita or any one of those guys are going to get the double teams and they're going to get the better players on them, which in turn is going to open things up for Joe Tryon. So I think Joe Tryon went to the perfect team to shine and I think he's going to be big for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Another thing I saw in this game today is Giovanni Bernard. Okay, He has great hands. He has James White type of hands. As a matter of fact, I think he's second since he came into the NFL behind James White in receiving yards for a running back. But you saw him catch one pass from Tom Brady today 
And you can just tell those two are going to be on the same page. And if you have followed Tom Brady, you know he loves his running backs. He loves his running backs, especially in big moments. And it seems like Giovanni Bernard can be that running back. You know, I didn't think that Tampa could get better, but it seems like they got better. Like, it seems like they got better. And I'm not talking just about what I saw in the preseason game. It's just the raw talent. Giovanni Bernard fits a weakness this team had. Leonard Fournette and Rojo had a lot of drop passes last year. Giovanni Bernard does not drop passes. So that's fixing a weakness. Now they have a back who can catch balls, especially on third down. Joe Tryon, right? This team already had an elite pass rush, but now their pass rush is going to be even better. The other thing that I saw in this game was the Bucks defense, right? Joseph Jones had an interception for a touchdown. Levante David, uh, a forced fumble and a fumble recovery by himself, right? And the Bucks defense today caused four fumbles, recovered two, and they had two interceptions. So, and a lot of those players that were playing were second and third string players. So it goes to show you how deep Tampa's defense is. Okay. We know their offense is going to be good. And I know there were drop passes today and they didn't put up a whole lot of points. And keep in mind, Mike Evans didn't play, right? I think he played a couple plays. Chris Godwin, a couple plays. AB, a couple plays. Like you didn't really see Tampa's offense for the entire game. So I wouldn't overthink any of this at all. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is going to be just fine. They'll be just fine. But what, what struck me as crazy is how deep Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is. Their defense was good all four quarters, right? And by the time you got to the fourth quarter, you know, they were going deep into the depth chart and their defense was still good. So when I look at the Bucs, right, they brought in Giovanni Bernard. They brought, uh, they drafted Joe Tryon. Their defense has taken that next step, right? I believe they call themselves the Grave Diggers. And when you give yourself a name like this, you better live up to it. And I'm pretty sure the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is going to live up to it. The last thing I took away from this game is Kyle Trask. Now, this one's a little weird. Like I said, you can't read too much into box numbers. If you look at the box numbers, it looks like he didn't play well, right? And there were times where, you know, if you just look at his arm strength, he had good arm strength, right? The decision making was a little so so. Now, to be objective and to be fair, right? Because I, you know, I was harsh on Mac Jones, so I want to be fair. Based on this game, he didn't perform well. Kyle Trask did not perform well. And you can say, well, he didn't have time to throw the ball. That's true. But one of the arts, that that you have to learn in the NFL that's different from college is timing, right? You have to know when to get rid of the ball. And if you notice, Kyle Trask would hold the ball for three to four seconds. And what you got to do is get rid of the ball in a half a second, get rid of the ball in a second, and keep the defense on their toes, and then pick and choose when to take your shots, when to hold it for three to five seconds, right? Because if the defense knows you're going to hold it for three to four seconds every single snap, they're going to bring the rain. They're going to bring the rain. They're going to come after you every single snap. You have to keep that defense in check, you know, by throwing, you know, one second or, or, or a second and a half. You got to hold the ball for a second, second and a half, get rid of it. And then that keeps the defense in check. If you notice, Kyle Trask never got going. This is because the defense saw he wasn't going to take the check down pass, right? He wasn't going to take the small stuff. He was going to keep throwing it down the field or 10 or more yard passes, right? So that's something he's going to have to figure out. He's going to have to learn that balance, right? You have to know when to take the check down pass. You have to know when to get the ball out of your hands. And you have to know when to take your shots. I watched a lot of Kyle Trask in college. And, you know, that's going to be the issue that they're going to have to work on with him. Because in college, he loved to throw the ball down the field. Okay, He loved to throw the ball down the field. And you saw it. He has a strong arm. So it's obvious why he loved to throw the ball down the field. But in the NFL, right, the talent is better. Everyone is much faster. And I think Kyle Trask kind of had a hello, welcome to the NFL game today, right? He just did. And you can say, well, the receiver should have held the ball. There was one maybe. I don't know if the receiver would have kept it in bounds, right? There was one maybe. But it just seemed like he was uncomfortable, right? He didn't seem like he was poised. And, you know, he's in a very difficult situation. 
right? He's a backup to Tom Brady. That's not easy at all. So like I said, you can't read too much into a preseason game. You just got to wait. There's obviously talent there with his arm. We got to see if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can develop that talent, right? And he can actually turn into an NFL quarterback. He can go from a college quarterback to an NFL quarterback. The good news is he doesn't have to do it anytime soon because Tom Brady's going to play this year and barring no injuries, he's going to play next year too. So anyway, after watching this game, I, I, you know, it just looks to me like the Bucs got better. It looks to me like the Bucs got better uh, just from a pure talent perspective, right? I'm not talking about the overall game. I'm just talking about zoning in on talent. The Bucs got better and uh, it's going to be an exciting year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their fans. Hey everyone, thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.